few things you need to know about drawings and multi-body parts. So we're going to go to the, uh, the default template this time. And while it's thinking about it, we have uh, three solid bodies that we're contending with. I'm going to go with the A landscape, it's fine. And this is going to, um, to now pull up, uh, let's go to the view palette. And we'll bring in and make sure that I'm finding the multi-body part. And in our process, we already created the assembly, so we can uh, we can go to the uh, to the assembly, and that's going to have the better functionality on the exploded view. Um, but if we're just um, bringing in geometry. And we want to detail some of uh, these items. Then, when this uh, this comes in, it's going to act like the uh, the normal drawing. We're not going to have the exploded view available. And what I really want to uh, to work with here is come back to this sheet, and I can do the uh, the same thing. And this time I'm going to be looking for the uh, for the base. So we're in, still in the projected view. Uh, let's just go for the uh, for the one. And instead of uh, dealing with uh, configurations or exploded views, when we have a multi-body part, we have select bodies. And this is going to launch the part, and we pick the base. And now the base is our the piece that we're working with. And go back to the um, select the view, go back to the drawing tab, go into projected view. And if I was, um, well, we'll try it on the next one. If I was in the uh, projected view already, um, it should uh, update as this is the parent, and this is going to reference the uh, the parent. Uh, geometry. So default link to parent, selected bodies. So we'll set up on our first pass again going through. And if I bring in the top, bring in the projected. If we want an isometric view, you can put in an isometric view. Making sure I'm on the parent view then, we'll go in and I will pick four the gasket, and this is another place where having the names on the solid bodies helps. We'll go ahead and pick that gasket. Now that didn't update uh, automatically, which um, I thought it would. So since it is of its own set, we'll just go back and pick. Notice we have the cosmetic thread from the base or from the top still showing up, so that might be something we'd have to hide. And I would want to make sure that it doesn't hide the cosmetic thread in the other views, that I'm just hiding it for that, uh, that view on that sheet. And if we look at the breakdown, so the drawing views, and then we had the, um, the cylinder base, and when it comes down to its whole thread, that's probably where we're, we're activating or deactivating the, the view on that, um, on that cosmetic thread. And then lastly would be the, uh, the top. Oops, it was already in there, so I should just be able to refresh it. There we go. I'll grab the top. And since the projected view wasn't uh, any great help last time, we'll go into the select bodies, make sure that I'm getting the cover plate. I can go back, let's see if we right click, and be able to see those drawing views, projected views. And if I was doing enough of this, and I don't see it, so if I was doing enough of this, I might add it to the heads up display or to the S button. Now there's a projected view, so that'll work. And that 
makes my first pass with just the um, uh, the the multi body solid bodies without having to extract out for the uh, for the assembly. So the next pass would be to apply dimensions, make sure that the um, uh, if we're setting up for layers, we would set up the layers. We could possibly uh, go back to our um, our custom template. Let's see, make sure I'm in the correct assignment and folder and save it. All right. So let's go ahead and close this. And for the um, for the actual assembly, then we want this multi-body uh, part open as much as possible, uh, meaning that it should be open when the uh, the assembly is open. And I'm going to do the um, well, let's try the the assembly. I made uh, made a few changes, did a few experiments. Um, can't leave well enough alone. So for the uh, for the assembly uh, for this template, I duplicated sheets with the predefined views, since the document template holds those predefined views and empty views. And I decided that at least. Um, for my purposes, the notes attached to the empty view weren't as functional as putting it in the uh, the sheet format. So, still experimenting, still uh, trying to find um, those those better ways to uh, utilize uh, these tools. So, let's go this time to the assembly. And as I mentioned, it's going to be a lot easier to work with and manage our so let's see if I drag that to nope, that's going to just go ahead and put in the uh, the view so that didn't really help so with the uh, predefined view we're just going to insert the model and find the assembly accept it and then we'll go the other route and click on show an exploded state for I think more uh, keeping track cannot ins insert the bill of materials. So one of the uh, the future changes I was planning on making to the uh, the document template was putting in a revision table on each of these uh, these sheets. But at this point, we haven't had to deal with many revisions. It's just more of a placeholder for uh, future uh, for the future process. So the way that this sheet would work then is our predefined views. If I insert the model, because the multi-body output the three parts and the assembly, I'm going to grab the um, the base chamber, and that's not quite the view that I would like. So let's go to the top. Okay, and because it is per standard, and this template has been pretty well set up then I'm going to get the uh, color corrections and the uh, the layers applied to the uh, to the geometry so a little bit helpful to maybe see the um, the side view if not then I can always delete it and if I decide that a section view is better uh, let's see we'll get into the drawing Grab the section view, place it, and accept it. And that one goes through. The other options were basically if I wanted to bring this um, off at an angle or jog to show some uh, some additional detail. And then we'll go back through the same process. And we'll browse since they're not open. Browse to the gasket. I'm just kind of going in the order that it would assemble these. The predefined view is always going towards the front, and based on how I created this model, then I'm going to have to, uh, at the very least, adjust that view. And then insert model, and we'll go for the cover plate. And one more adjustment of the view. All right, so. This isn't uh, affecting the document uh, template at all. 
And if I noticed that I was getting to uh, sheet five or six, maybe I had an assembly with uh, 10 parts. And uh, I just kind of arbitrarily decided that uh, six would be enough or more than enough. So in this case, I would uh, just go ahead and delete the not needed. And all I did was right click on the S5. And then if I decided that I needed additional, I would just copy that, right click and copy, and then right click and paste. And after the selected sheet or move to the end, uh, probably the uh, move to end would have been better. And then we can uh, either right click and rename from the tab. Or if I go into the sheet properties, right click and properties. And again, if you haven't done this, make sure that you customize the menu and you make sure that the properties are checked. And then if you're not getting that, worst case is you can hit the down arrow and properties will appear just like when I'm right clicking over here and doing the down arrow to get to delete. All right, so if we go into the properties, there is my sheet uh, name. I just happened to name these from the full word sheet to S and that um, uh, helps out a little bit. So since we only need the four sheets, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the extras. And now based on that setup, I can go and start my process of adding the tables. So it would be nice if the, um, the bill of materials could be assigned to a predefined view, thinking that eventually there would be an assembly, but the, um, the software wants it directly attached to an assembly view. And I don't know of any way to uh, to tell it that that view will always hold an assembly. So we go ahead and save this. And this can be our pressure cylinder um, assembly drawing. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now we're ready for the next pass, putting the balloons on, going through, verifying our... Uh, layer colors, our geometry, adding dimensions, making small adjustments to the views as needed, and completing out that process.